And uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of February 23rd. You'll remember that uh, our secretary was absent at home, ill, and uh, managed with the help of our support system here and uh, good television to uh, do these minutes, and the same is true tonight. Uh, so, Alice, I hope you're recuperating, and thank you for sticking with it while you were not well. I uh, move the uh, meet meeting minutes be accepted. And frankly, I didn't find any errors in there this time. Maybe she ought to just stay homesick all the time. Huh? <laughs> I wouldn't wish it upon her, but hey, she did well. She did. Second. Any uh, discussion? Any other comments on the minutes? There was one, my error. Uh, yeah. Well, the date for, uh, in the third paragraph, fourth paragraph down, just above new business, yep. December 29, 1988. Should have been 98. 98. <laughs> Was it one other one that you found lost? They're right together. Oh. Right. Circle. Well, I don't have the circle, but do you remember what it was? They're both the same, the date. Oh, okay. So in, in, the, in the first part of that paragraph, the minutes of the December 29th <laughs> meeting and, and in the last sentence of that paragraph should be uh, 98. It is 98 there. Yeah. Where was the other one? December, December meeting. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a January meeting. No, we didn't have one. I guess we're all set then. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as uh, read with the one correction? Any opposed? Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, old business. Is there any that we need to hear about? As far as I know, there isn't any. Bruce? Not that I know. If not, we'll move to new business, which includes three items for the evening's uh, agenda. And the first is to hear the request of Donald E. and Ann M. Clark, 618 Shore Road, tax map U02, lot 42B, for a right side property line variance of three feet six inches from the required 20 feet to construct an addition to the existing dwelling. Is there someone here representing the Clarks? Uh, I am uh, Don Clark, representing the Clarks. Okay. <coughs> Um, I have nothing to add uh, to the uh, written materials that were submitted except for a, uh, a letter which I had signed by a number of the abutters uh, which reflects that they have been uh, advised of the uh, requested uh, variance as well as reviewed the plans uh, that we currently have uh, which are in front of you. Uh, for that build out and that those individuals have no objection uh, to the variance requested. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, individuals in the community who do have an objection to the requested variance. Let me just pick up on that and get this in the record if I can, Mr. Clark, and then we'll go on from there. Uh, I've been handed an, an uh, I guess you could call it a petition uh, with original signatures which starts, I have been told about the request of Donald E. and Ann M. Clark, 618 Shore Road, tax map U02, lot 42B, for a variance from the provisions of the zoning ordinance allowing them to construct an addition to their existing dwelling within 16 feet 6 inches from the right side property line, <clears throat> excuse me, and have reviewed their proposed building plans. I have no objection to their request. And it's signed by uh, Betsy Hunt, lot 22, Alexander Anton, lot 24, Sean Todron, lot 26, Jean hmm, Orcutt, it looks like, uh, lot 28, Bill Orcutt, same lot, Thomas and Martha Noyes, excuse me, Myers, 25, uh, Thomas Ward, lot 65, um, Sorry, uh, Tracy Bulos, lot 42, Michael Cohen, lot 42A, uh, Hedy Cohen, 
42A and Greg Bulos. Um, and I'll include this in the minutes. Thank you. Uh, and just so, the, uh, just so that you're aware, uh, Greg Bolas was signing with respect to the lot, which is to the east of lot 42, but doesn't, at least on the um, uh, notice that was sent out, bear a number. It's the waterfront lot to the east of lot 42. Uh, I guess I, I could use a little more explanation, Mr. Clark. I drove by today and looked at it, and uh, I'm having just a little bit of difficulty understanding uh, what it is you're doing. Are you, are you going to continue to have a garage, or is the garage actually being converted into this play area? Or? No, the build-out, I think the best view of the build-out is uh, attached as Exhibit F to the uh, application, which is a floor plan. Bear with me while I dig through the pile here. Exhibit one. Uh, exhibit uh, oh, F. One. I'm sorry? Yeah, Exhibit F. It would be the proposed preliminary floor plan A1.1, mm -hmm. Exhibit F. And if you look at the floor plan, you'll see that uh, in the place currently occupied by the garage, what our proposal is, is to build a, a great room uh, a mudroom and a, a bath, uh, and then put the garage on the front. Uh, what it will allow us to do is to then uh, convert that space to uh, usable space rather than just as a garage. That space actually has probably the best view of the water on the property, which is uh, in part what motivates uh, our request. <coughs> Do other members have questions while I'm looking at this? I guess I have a question. Yes. Uh, the, current, the current corner of the back of the garage, is that 20 feet from the property line? Yes, it is. That's it's exactly 20 feet. Exactly. And so, so what happens is it behind the house because... So it's the extension behind that that encroaches on the 20 foot. Exactly. That, that, the variance is actually, the requested variance is a triangular piece which would represent build out space from behind the current existing okay. property or, or ha uh, garage uh, towards the uh, east side of the property or towards the water, correct? So it's actually, it's not a, a variance of the entire length of the property. It's just, a, a, it's about an eight foot uh, 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 length by a maximum of three, point, three, in a, uh, three feet, six inches. <clears throat> I'm sorry, is there another question? Mr. Howden, did you have a question? That was the same question I was going to ask. Okay. Thank you. And I think the, the best, um, the best exhibit to, to see exactly what's being requested is Exhibit B, which, uh, in which I have colored in in dark uh, exactly that triangular piece that uh, uh, would be required to be varied for purposes of the build out. Uh, towards the water. <clears throat> I guess where I'm still having a problem, Mr. Clark, uh, is with, hang on just a minute here, I'll find it. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the findings that this board must make in order to authorize any kind of a variance uh, and which questions are included in your application and your response 
is number 9A, why the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. In other words, which is the ordinance definition of a hardship. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm having a hard time seeing a hardship here or why that property uh, cannot yield a reasonable return without this variance. Well, I <clears> guess the, the best answer to that is the one I, I've provided. Um, uh, when we, when you look at the ratio between the, the value of the land and the, the value of the building, the land represents almost 40 percent of the assessed value of the land, of the assessed value of the property. Uh, it was the opinion, it was my opinion as well as the opinion of others that a build out of this nature was desirable, was very desirable in this land because what you essentially have is a uh, an undersized house and a very valuable pe piece of property. Um, the, when we went to an architect to ask, the, ask them to design something that would make sense both from a cost, efficient, a cost efficiency uh, and enhancement of value, what, they pro what we've uh, submitted to the board is what they proposed. And essentially it's the the reason that you have the build out on the water side is because of the plumbing uh, uh, situation. If you push the room further back towards the road, um, because of the, pl the placement of the uh, bathroom, you would essentially have to plumb it around a corner. Um, so if you, and I think the best example, or if you look again at that floor plan exhibit F, you will see that the existing or that the bathroom proposed to be built would then be adjacent to the kitchen and so the plumbing would be in line rather than having it pushed further out. The other, con the other consideration that we had, frankly, was the uh, views of the surrounding properties. And if you pushed the front, uh, if you pushed the uh, proposed construction back towards the garage, um, really what you're going to be doing is further encroaching on views of people to, uh, to the north of the property uh, who currently now are looking at uh, the, uh, a, a very nice lot. And so what I was trying to do was to minimize as much as possible the impact on anybody's view. Uh, and so if you just built out on one side and you created an L, that, it's, that would have been the most encroachment. Um, so what we're trying to do, again, is, is, is do it in a way that nobody in the community would have a problem with it and still uh, obtain our goals, which was to build the great room in the area that it's indicated. Other questions from board members? Thank you, Mr. Clark. I have one oh, sorry. question. Go ahead, Mr. Um, when did you purchase this property? Uh, purchased it in September of 1997. Any others? Yes. Um, Any others? <clears throat> as the chairman said, uh, one of the criteria that we have to evaluate by is whether it can yield a reasonable return, not an optimized return. And um, my, my question for you would be whether there's a way to redesign this in some way that there's no encroachment and still yield a reasonable return. I, I think that um, the only alternative would be to build an L. And I think that the community would be better off for two reasons, or the, the surrounding properties would be better off without an L structure for two reasons. First of all, it, it wouldn't look as good. And I think that in that neighborhood, you, uh, it's certainly a concern of mine that I, if we build anything, we build something that looks good. Um, and two, again, it goes back to my concern about the views. We're not building up over the kitchen. Uh, there is a, an abutter who looks over our house, and that was import you know, that's important to him. Um, so uh, what we tried to do is to do what we needed to do with the least uh, offense to the surrounding properties. Um, will we obtain a reasonable return doing something else? I think that 
it becomes a cost benefit analysis at some point just spending the money and not getting what you wanted probably wouldn't do that. I, I might not undertake it if, if I was forced to that because A, I'd be concerned about people's views if I built an L. And B, um, I would be, uh, I don't believe that the build out would look as good and that wouldn't do anything for me. Any other questions for Mr. Clark? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Is there anyone uh, else who wishes to speak in favor of this application? My name is Greg Bolas, and I own the property immediately to the east of the applicant's property. We share about 200 feet of uh, common boundary. I think in terms of the impact, uh, to the neighborhood, if there were any impact, it would probably affect me the most because it's coming towards my property. I just want to say I have absolutely no problem with the, the design, and I would hope that uh, the board could see fit to uh, grant the applicant's request. Just so I'm clear, Mr. Bullis, if I'm sitting on Shore Road looking over the wall at Mr. Clark's property, your house is where? Uh, I'm at 644 Shore Road. It's the house to the right. To the right. Is just standing shore road looking at the water. And there's another house out toward the water beyond you. That's not your house. Behind Mr. Clark's house. Behind Mr. Clark. No. No, okay. that is not. All right. That is Hetty, Hetty Cohen's house. <clears throat> Any questions for Mr. Bullis? Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone who wishes to speak? Uh, excuse me, go ahead. Are you for, in favor or opposed? Okay, if there's, just wait a minute then. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? Any neutral people <laughs> who want to just speak, please. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth. Can you please come up here? Oh. We, we record this, and, and you're on TV too, so if you don't get in front of a microphone. And I didn't put on my makeup, sorry. Okay. Introduce yourself again. I'm Elizabeth Campbell. Um, I live across the street at 7 Island View Road. We're at the corner of Island View and Shore Road. And I simply just wanted to know what was going on. We've been away for 10 days, got in late last night, and found this in the mail. And um, we were just concerned as to what this was going to look like, because we have this tiny, tiny little view of Cushing Island in the water. And we were just concerned as to whether or not this addition was going to impact our view. Um, I hate to be selfish, but I'm sorry. We bought the house because we had that little bit of a view. and. Um, I just wondered if, if somebody could share that with us so that we would know what it's going to look like. And if you're going closer to the, to the driveway, that's our view um, Mr. from Clark, where your garage is. Would you ends. be willing to come to the mic uh, while uh, she's there and sort of put yourself at her house and describe what you think she'll see? Uh, sure. Uh, I guess first I just need to know uh, which lot is yours. We are. Right there. Okay. That's the um, words, and that's always right there. We will not be building towards the driveway. Okay. The existing garage line will maintain will be maintained. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the existing garage. I'm referring um, to Mrs. Ms. Campbell to the uh, building permit application that was submitted as part of the uh, uh, the package. Um, and so what you can see is the line is, remains the same. In fact, you can keep this if you'd like. Um, and so what we're doing is we're building out in, directly behind it, and we're building out in front of it. Um, and so your view is here. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that it will impact in any, in any adverse way. Okay, well, that was my concern, that if it was going closer the Bullis property would be closer to the driveway, and that's basically that's the only Absolutely. view we have only during the winter months because with the foliage that's shot anyway. But I understand the the existing the, the line along the garage will be maintained. 
right, so it will not further encroach along okay. the driveway. The only place that it encroaches is behind the house because of the, the way the property slopes mm -hmm. this way. And is it just going to be one one floor? Uh, it will, two no, floors? it'll be two. It'll be two. It'll be higher than the existing structure. This is the way it would. Uh, I'm now referring to exhibit E. <clears throat> this is the way it will look on the front. Right here. So currently, the the uh, the roof is at the same level mm -hmm. as this structure here. It will be going up. It will go up. Yes. All right. So we will lose probably just a little bit then. If you look over the garage. Yeah. Uh, yes, you it, it, It's a weird, it's a kind of a triangle towards us like that. With the island and the door in the front. Um, do you understand what you're looking at now? And by the way, who named Island View Road and you can't see the islands? We Since, could before yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Walker decided to pass away and they sold the lots and okay. built up and that was that. I'll give this to you, sir. All right, thank you. Do you have any additional comments now that you have a better picture of? I have a better picture of what it, of what it's going to be, and it does appear that we may lose some of our ocean view. In what sense would that be? Well, with, but in terms of the height, up a little, by being a second uh, second level on that. Yeah. But as long as it doesn't go closer to the driveway. I so we can live with that. Okay. Thank Questions? You. Yes. Uh, do you have a picture right there? Did he just give you a yes. diagram of some mm -hmm. sort? Explain for us where on this the construction <coughs> would impede your view. I'm sorry, where the construction would what? Would impede, what part of this would, would cut off part of the view that you have now? This, the, uh, can you point on this? Uh, no. What, you, what exhibit are you on? I can't. Well, I'm looking at B, but if there's any other one that, that you think is better, that would be just as helpful. I don't think I can explain it on this one. It looks like the driveway is this way, but when he showed me the diagram where they're lifting the, um, the roof line right of the garage. Yeah, maybe I can help. Uh, I think that uh, what the would be, would be um, the best exhibit for that would be to look at exhibit uh, E, e yeah. as in Edward. If you look at the south elevation, the top picture, um, I think what she's uh, describing is because the height <coughs> of the structure is higher than it it is currently existing. Um, currently, the garage peaks at the same level as the lower roof, which is between the uh, garage and the main house, okay? Um, okay, so the whole, the whole thing then gets, would get in your way, as opposed to, <coughs> one side or, or the other of the existing garage. But yes. It wouldn't make a difference because you're looking at it from the end, if you will. I th yeah, I think the problem for her would be because of the entire structure being higher mm. okay. rather than the, either the front or the back. Okay. Of the <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else who wishes to uh, speak on this issue of for, against, otherwise? If not, the hearing is closed and uh, the board is on the floor and you may discuss, mo move, or whatever you like. I'd like to make a, a comment. I, I Please. Sympath I sympathize with the interest of the applicant and it's a very attractive design. Um, but I think that we do have a quasi-judicial responsibility and one of the criteria that's most important is this reasonable return one and I, I don't see that the applicant cannot achieve a reasonable return without this variance. Are there other uh, comments from board members? 
I have to say I'm, I'm a little concerned that's a, a, that's a barrier that we don't have the facts to, to get over, um, given that the, the house was just purchased, so the prior owner, one can presume, received a reasonable return. Um, uh, there's nothing that this, there's, there's no existing problem that this remedies that, that uh, shows that it can't get a reasonable return without these changes. I, I would like to hear if anyone has any thoughts that um, might explain a little more, a little more than, but put it this way, I don't think that the basis that you can compare the, the value of the land, say it's a valuable piece of property with a small house, and that, I think that would be a dangerous precedent to set as a, a basis for saying there's no reasonable return, and I'm not sure that there's anything else in here. <clears throat> in other words, you don't see any, you're not sure one way or the other, there's no facts to drive that decision in your mind is what you're saying? Well, I understand the mm -hmm. argument to be that, mm -hmm. uh, that it's a valuable piece of land with uh, uh, a structure on it that, that uh, doesn't, doesn't befit that valuable piece of property. And, and if, that's, if that's the basis for it, then I don't know that that is, I, I'm pretty sure that the law doesn't allow that. And, and I think it would be a, a tough precedent to set. Uh, if there's another reason that someone is aware of or can explain to me why I'm wrong, then I would like to hear that because I opened the talk on this. Any other board members who wish to comment or respond to I, Tom's uh, question, Amor? I can't respond to Tom's, but looking at this thing, this. Uh, this property line is kind of screwy here. Now, I um, am mildly curious if they had drawn a straight line from the, what is, appears to be the Cohen property and carried it right on up to Shore Road, this could have been done without having a variance problem, couldn't it? You'll have to ask Bruce that question because I don't know what, even what the scale is on that line I'm looking they'd, at. But. If they'd had a property line that had gone right up there like this. Oh, I see what you mean. On, on the uh, right side of the house, you mean? That's correct. They wouldn't be here. But that's not the case. So. No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm asking it for, for my own yeah. information because, I, and that's odd. Is, are you done, Mr. Oden? No, oh, I'm sorry, yes, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> Is there someone who wishes to make a motion if we're done with our exploration? Uh, I'll, make, I'll make the motion upon application of Donald E. and Ann M. Clark uh, for a variance from the strict application uh, of the zoning ordinance requirement of uh, section 1963. Uh, hearing was held today, March 23, 1999. The applicant seeks a right side property line variance of three foot six inches from the required 20 feet to construct in addition to the existing dwelling. The findings of fact. Donald and Ann Clark are the owners of a property at 618 Shore Road, which is in the Residential C District. Tax map U02, lot 42B, containing 25,500 square feet. Um, we have four conclusions. Can I suggest, Mr. Oden, that we yeah, already want to have some additional facts in here? I'm not sure exactly where you're heading, but... Uh, well, I'm not either, but that's you can, <laughs> If you can uh, come up with any other fact-based uh, observations that would be helpful to support whatever conclusion you're about to lead to. Well, I was going to, I, I was going to, going to delay for a moment continuing on. Um, uh, do you want me to... Uh, 
give my <coughs> reaction to each of these as I present them. For example, the land in question can yield a reasonable turn, return uh, regardless of uh, the variance, regardless of whether the variance is granted. Uh, is that what you're looking for? Uh, no, what I was uh, looking was hoping you would uh, be able to uh, help fill in behind yourself there or ahead of yourself really. Uh, for example, if that's where you're trying to go on the conclusion, then perhaps uh, a fact might be that uh, uh, that the applicant uh, proposed that uh, the land cannot yield a reasonable return because oh, I, of the 40 percent assessed value. Well, I need to go uh, back and reference this uh, if I'd realized you. Um, <clears throat> well, I'll try it. Um, The land in question cannot yield a reasonable turn unless a variance is granted. Uh, the applicant uh, suggests that uh, the land currently represents 40 percent of the assessed valuation, assessed value of the property. Uh, adding a family room will enhance the value of the premises. Uh, he suggests it is logical that uh, such an addition uh, is reflected in the proposed plan, uh, even though the lot is non-conforming and is, uh, the lot is non-conforming now given its uh, approxim approximation to the right of way in the existing driveway. Um, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood uh, effectively, uh, uh, the property line runs across the existing driveway. As a result, uh, the building out uh, to the each east will encroach upon the 20-foot setback, uh, thus requiring uh, the, the variance. However, the variance has nothing to do with the general condition of the neighborhood or neighborhood conditions. The granting of a variance does not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, the proposed build out is consistent with the neighborhood and will enhance the value of the property. Uh, and that most of the properties uh, in the general area are pretty much builder bigger than the proposed build out. The hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. <clears throat> the variant was not anticipated by the applicant nor the prior owner. Uh, however, the desirability the, uh, of the build-out only became evident as the, as the design process was undertaken, proved the most cost-efficient and and would provide the most return uh, for the cost of the project. Can I ask you, uh, Mr. Houghton, on that particular item, uh, the statement you just made would, would lead one to the conclusion that you believe there is a hardship. And that's, I'm not sure that's consistent with your comment about number one. So I just um, I wish I couldn't, didn't have to give you a clear-cut answer to that. <laughs> but uh, my suggestion uh, is, I think in this particular instance, that there, there is a hardship due to the, uh, the arrangement of the, the property uh, with the uh, existing property line, the arrangement of the property line as regards the build out and as I have read through this thing and I'm editorializing at this point, That's fine. Uh, it appears that uh, uh, to fulfill the needs and wishes of the property owner, the only appropriate way of doing this is to do it with, by uh, picking up the three and a half feet 
which they need to uh, uh, add their addition, if that's what you want to call it, or the, or the new building. And I think that, uh, you know, frankly, uh, I, I do know the, the property, uh, and having visited and seen it before, there, it certainly is not going to encroach upon uh, Mr. Bullis in any way and certainly won't impact on Mr. Cohen. I, I do not have a full appreciation how the view will be uh, impacted by this, and I'm not sure that I could really address that side of it. But uh, so. You can make a motion out of that, Alice. Three cheers. <laughs> uh, why don't you go on to the next item? And it, it, I, I presume your your judgment, the motion. Uh, it, uh, in my uh, in my opinion, I would uh, uh, approve the uh, suggest that the uh, zoning board of appeals uh, approve the uh, granting of the variance of uh, three point six feet. Okay, uh, now you've confused me, I'm sorry. Uh, as I understood your proposal for conclusion number one, it was that the land in question can yield a reasonable return. And no, I, I felt it can, it, yes, I felt it could yield a okay. reasonable return. Uh, but the problem is you can't, uh, you can't have, my you cake can't and have it. your cake and eat it too. No? <laughs> you can't uh, have, have an affirmative finding there and uh, come to the conclusion that you came to? Well, I, I, there's just no question in my mind that the land can yield, can yield a reasonable return. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, it's obvious that Mr. Clark bought the land less than two years ago, and uh, I, I presume that a, today's market, he could certainly sell it. So uh, if, the, uh, if, we have, if we need a positive response to all four of those, then I have to uh, reverse my initial thinking and uh, suggest that uh, the uh, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals has got to uh, reject the appeal. Let, let me go back just so that, we, that there's a little more clarity about what the Board is faced, faced with in this case. Uh, and I'm reading now from the ordinance, uh, which is Article 5, Section 19-52, Subsection B, Variances. The grant variances from the terms of this ordinance provided that there is no substantial departure from the ordinance, from the intent of the ordinance, excuse me, and two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause undue hardship as defined by 30-A uh, main revised statutes 4353 zoning adjustment. Then what's, uh, what appears on the order that Mr. Houghton's been reading from is the following. The term undue hardship as used in this section means the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. The need for a variance is due to unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. The granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality and the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And those four elements collectively go to make up undue hardship. And it's my opinion and understanding that the board would have to uh, find affirmatively in favor of the applicant in each of those four questions. And that's why we're having this discussion. I want to be clear what it is Mr. Houghton uh, is trying to accomplish and uh, what he bases it on so that it's a clear order. And it's my understanding from the discussion, both from you, Mr. Houghton, and other members, that there's at the moment at least no comfort that the board can affirmatively address number one, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Um, and uh, if that's the case, then the board cannot find in favor of the applicant. Are you with me? Yeah, so, very much oh, with okay. You, yes. All right. I, so, I didn't we uh, sorry, I just. I'm saying all that just to be clear both to the, no, group, I, to the audience and uh, yeah. to make sure that, that I'm understanding what it is you're trying to do. Well, uh, what I'm trying to do and, and uh, what I did are two things. Okay. Uh, I have... Uh, well, let me just put it another way. It's your intention uh, 
to move that item number one, the land in question can yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted, and the other three you would move that the board find affirmatively? That's correct. Okay. And uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. There's a second. Now it's on the floor for discussion. Anybody want to discuss it further? If not, then all those in favor of the motion, as stated, raise your right hand. I see all in favor and nobody opposed. So the uh, motion is passed, which uh, leads to a judgment of the Zoning Board of Appeals that uh, the variance appeal is denied. And uh, we got a s serious problem, Mr. Clark. I, I think that uh, my sense is that every member in the board thinks what you're doing makes sense in many ways, not only for you, but for the community. But the ordinance is such that uh, there's not enough evidence in front of us to suggest that, in fact, the uh, uh, value of the property cannot leave a reasonable return in its current situation or in fact, in some different variation of the plan. So I guess we're sending you back to the drawing board and uh, hope you can come up with something that you and the neighbors can live with and still meet your needs. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda then. It's uh, <clears throat> lost my agenda in the piles here. <laughs> ah, here it is. Uh, item two, to hear the appeal of Arthur J. Hendrick, 3 Alexander Drive, tax map R04, lot 44-3, for a front property line variance of five feet from the required 30 feet and a left side property variance of five feet from the required 30 feet to construct a barn. Mr. Hendrick here. I have to say I went to look at that property today and I'm, I live to tell about it. It's. Uh, <laughs> You have to have a map to get there, and the map I had didn't do me any good, but uh, it's a lovely spot. Well, thank you. I have uh, nothing to add to it at this point, although I know I'm going to have to uh, come up with evidence of hardship. Um, I'm hoping that a couple of letters were included in your packet that I delivered last week from um, immediate affected butters. If they haven't been, I've got some copies of those. They're in there. Um, it was the top two in your, in your pile of. Let me just note for the record that uh, the board was provided this evening with copies of letters. Uh, working my way down through it here. Uh, from neighbors uh, Alan Mars Marcus uh, and Pam Gustin. Uh, which in effect says we don't have a problem with what you're doing. And uh, from Ron Treister, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, we have no problems whatsoever with your proposed plan to build a carriage house for the diagram you delivered to us. We're strong aficionados of your work and have no doubt that the product will be first quality. Uh, It'll probably work to our advantage and assist to increase the value of our property, of adjacent property. Uh, you had nothing else to add, Mr. Um, well, as we discuss uh, certain questions and so forth, yes, I will have something to add. Uh, and I could do it at that time or I could do it now. Why don't you go ahead and, and add anything you want to, and then if, okay. because if the board doesn't have any questions, you're going to be out and left. Right. Um, well, the, uh, about a reasonable return and hardship and so forth, uh, it's regional, reasonable return is certainly a relative term relative to what I paid for the land, how much it cost me for betterments, how much it cost me to build my house, um, what the market value, I mean, what the market is at the time. Uh, so I, uh, I do have uh, 
one thing that I'd like to give you now, which is uh, something when I when my wife and I uh, when my wife and I decided to buy the land and signed on the land, there was a driveway in place um, with a culvert, and about a week before we closed, we had to. Um, the previous owner uh, told us we couldn't use that driveway and we had to remove the culvert and we had to bring the driveway up um, to where it where it is right now and it had to um, it led to a lot more uh, work uh, in excavation and betterments and we had to completely redesign the house and um, it was about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars more in excavation uh, costs for the driveway and so forth and the redesign of the house um, and that we had to also go around a ledge outcropping so what you're looking at is is a section of, of the driveway that we had to abandon uh, right before closing and it almost uh, queered the deal actually if I can use that politically incorrect term um, and so the location for my small barn, 24 by 28, uh, is on the crook of that driveway where it comes around uh, to come into my garage. And a, uh, with the 30-foot setback, it's right next to the edge of the driveway. And um, that was a hardship that was partially created by me because I built the house, and I know this is going to be a question also, which is question D, uh, because I built the house and put in the driveway. The leach field was, uh, had to be where it is, and that partially um, determined where I had to put the barn because I can't get to basically the back part of my land between the leach field, the house, and um, what are some wetlands. Uh, this is the only, just, really the only minute. location. Sorry, the tape recorder ran out of tape there, so give us a second to rewind. Let me just point out to the board, and if you had caught up to it in the packet, which includes uh, Mr. Hendrick's application, second or third page from the bottom is a lot layout which includes the leach field and the proposed location of the barn so you can see the relationship that he's talking about. Uh, it's headed proposed 24 by 28 barn. Okay. okay. Keep going. <laughs> Just for the record while the Tapers off, I was noting to the board members that if they look deeply into their packets that came with the agenda, there is a drawing that Mr. Hendrick provided which explains or visualizes the uh, relationship between the house, the barn, the driveway, and the leach field. Why don't you continue now? I'm sorry for the interruption. Right. Well, it, um, it seems to me that the, the size of the hardship is, is roughly related to the size of the request. Um, I'm not asking to get uh, 10 feet from the line. I just want to go from 30 to 25 uh, in order to to get it away from my drive, to get the barn away from my driveway, so it doesn't become a hazard in the winter time with sliding vehicles and plows and so forth. Um, I'm not sure I have anything else to add right at this moment. Okay. Uh, as you just heard in the discussion in the previous application, uh, there are four issues that the board is required to address. Uh, you already pointed out that the reasonable return issue is a, is a difficult one. And, uh, and I think it's, you also were implying, uh, and if you won't, I, if you didn't, I will, that the one that really reads the hardship is not the result of action take, taken by the applicant or prior owner is also one that's going to have to be a little difficult for us to deal with right. uh, given the facts of this matter. 
Um, so if you have anything else to add on those, either of those two subjects, now would be a good time. But <laughs> Right. Uh. Well, um, as far as a reasonable return, um, I, I'm a builder. I built my house, and uh, I, I built it in a, a style. It's a broken back salt box, uh, colonial style, um, with some nice exterior detail. And I plan to do the same on the carriage house slash barn. Um, and and if I, I don't think if I get this setback, I'd have to go to an L shape or possibly add on to my garage, which uh, simply wouldn't be what I want to do in terms of, uh, of this, this lot and my house and the way I want to live. And uh, certainly uh, it would yield a reasonable return, but that's again relative to the money I had to put into it and the additional money I had to spend because of the location of the driveway and so forth. Um, so without a, a spreadsheet on it, perhaps we don't really know if it would be a reasonable return or not. Um, I think this carriage house would make not only my lot and my house look better, but it would make the neighborhood look better um, because the thing of beauty is a joy forever, as Keith said. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Keats didn't probably know too much about reasonable returns, so I'll leave that alone. Um, Did you build the other houses in that small subdivision area there? No. Are there other board members that have questions for Mr. Hendrick? Uh, yeah, have you... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, we'll work our way up. Excuse me. Have you tried to uh, relocate it other than where you presently are and uh, planning to put it and if uh, so, uh, why couldn't you do it elsewhere? You seem to have lots of room down there. Right. Well, I can't put a driveway to it or uh, even a path um, uh, that I could use for the vehicle and without going over uh, the leach field. And then it's blocked by the tank, the house, and then the, the land falls away in the back of the garage down to uh, some marsh, marshy area. So um, when I refer later, I, I think in question D to the lay of the land, um, basically there's a, there's a lot of ledge outcroppings and, and the, the house blocks really my access to the back. Now this is something that I did, but I don't know if there was any, was any other way around it. Mm -hmm. And I always uh, wanted to put a barn in that area until I physically laid it out last fall and found that it would really be squeezing it um, to put it in with the 30-foot setback in that location. Basically, I, I want to build something that's, that's nice looking, and, uh, and I think the best way to do that, I think the only way to do that is, is to, get the, to get the variance. I, I've got another question. Go ahead. Um, as, I, as I look at this, um, you're holding uh, over to your line 25 feet on the side. Uh, would there be a problem bringing that into compliance by coming five feet uh, closer to your house? Would that be a tough, uh, tough move for you? Um, on the sideline? Your, your side. Uh, yeah, I, well, I've got a huge uh, pine tree there um, that would have to go that I'd like to keep. Um, it's conceivable that I could uh, were I to get uh, half of this variance on the back line, um, it's conceivable that I could uh, cut down the tree and, and push it over uh, the 30 feet from the sideline. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Aldergren? Uh, yes, you passed around this um, earlier drawing, and I, I was not clear on it. So it sounded that it's you were describing the, the changes as part of your hardship explanation. And I was wondering, now that we have the map in front of us, if you could explain what the property situation was when you first purchased the land. Right. I know that that's difficult to understand because it was difficult for me to understand because that's that all, all that I was given by the person selling me the, the land and very minimal explanation as to why I couldn't use the 70 feet or so of driveway and the culvert that was already in and why I had to redesign the house. Um, I had 
apparently he might have uh, he might have uh, been remiss in putting Phil in that area. I don't really know. I think Maureen would probably know more about it, uh, but she's not here. And um, so we had to bring the driveway up to the left, put in another culvert. Uh, we didn't blast for the driveway, so we had to skirt a large piece of uh, ledge, which means I had to go around to, to the house, which you see that big bend in the driveway there. Um, and as I say, the, the hardship uh, in terms of reasonable uh, return, uh, it added about almost $20,000. To the, to the cost of the, just the driveway alone, plus the redesign. Um, and in fact, in my original design, I did have uh, the driveway coming directly to the house to a lower level that was a two-level garage that would have precluded the need for a barn because I would have had the storage and so forth necessary. Um, and I would have been able to build that in, in the style in which I wanted. So it... Um, Financially, it's, uh, it's continuing to cause a hardship, actually. Uh, that's, that's basically all I can tell you about, uh, about question A and reasonable return. Uh, let me, and it's related to D also, certainly. Let me clarify. Through self uh, from what I know of this lot, the reason why the culvert in the driveway was, was, had to be moved was because it infringed on a critical wetland. Um, and therefore um, was a violation. And also the setback from the edge of the uh, critical wetland was such that the house and whatever he's doing has to be on that end of the lot since um, at a minimum it has to be 100 feet from the upland edge. So that takes care of at least 100 feet of that, of that area between the edge of the critical wetland on the map he just passed out in his, in his uh, dwelling site. Are you suggesting that um, this is the only place he could have built on that lot? I'm suggesting that, that, that the ordinance says that, that it's a 250 feet setback, foot setback from a critical wetland, but this was allowed to be set back to 100 feet because it, the topography separated the two. So I'm suggesting that anything he needed to do out there had to be at least 100 feet, if not more, because of the lay of the land um, requiring um, uh, the distance of 100 feet. So I'm not suggesting that's the only location. I'm just suggesting that at least the first 100 feet from the critical wetland, you couldn't get a permit from this office. When you say it had to be moved, as I understood it, he was saying the road was built by somebody else. Evidently, there was a violation. And so the violation was not preceded his ownership, let's put it that way. I don't know that. I, yes. I just know that there was a violation. I don't know. I'm assuming it was uh, a Cowan property at the time. It uh, did precede my owning of it, right. And in fact, he wasn't, he wouldn't have been able to sell it to me. There was some frantic things going on at the end that I wasn't really privy to, and he uh, was scrambling to uh, keep the sale alive at that point, and, uh, and I sort of took it on the chin. Mr. Keneally? Um, I'm a little confused. There are two drawings part of your original application? No, sir, they're not. Um, that, that one with the, uh, that shows that stub of driveway, um, that's not part of the original application. But I wasn't aware really until just the last few days that I was going to have to prove a hardship, and so this is my attempt at doing so. No, well, let me make sure we're talking about the same thing. Okay. There, there are two drawings here um, that show something different, and that's what I'm having trouble with. This, this shows um, it's a considerable distance between the driveway and the barn. Oh, right. This well, one shows the barn up against the driveway. Yes, right. This one shows considerable room to move the barn. That's why I'm. Right. Yes, it does. It's, uh, there really isn't that much room. If I were to go for her, you would set back. Uh, in fact, this corner would be right up on the edge of the asphalt. So if the driveway is more. Starts its turn, sort of like that. Okay. Jack, can you 
say what he showed you because the microphone can't hear. Uh, think pointed fingers. Okay. So. Um, I, I, if I interpret what he said, um, these are very rough drawings. There are two drawings part of the original package. The first drawing um, shows considerable space between the driveway and the proposed barn. You're talking now about the drawing that includes several other lots That's on right. it as well? Yes, That's right. The second drawing shows the proposed barn right on the edge of the driveway. I think neither drawing is absolutely correct. The right. second drawing is closer to correct than the first one in that the proposed barn, even with the 25-foot setback, still would be at the edge of the paved driveway. So really you're saying the other drawing, uh, the one that shows just your house, is relatively accurate? That's probably more accurate. In the relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Hendrick? If not, thank you, sir. Uh, anyone else who wishes to speak on this application, either for, against, or otherwise? Yes, sir. My name's Ken Campbell. I live directly in front of Mr. Hendrick. And I came tonight just to learn more about these meetings and what he wanted to do, and I, I have no problem with it. I um, just wanted to state that. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Campbell? How big is your lot? It looks very large. Yeah. I'm just looking at that. My lot's six acres. Yeah, okay. And where is your house in relation? To, uh, well, we, the only thing we have that shows you a lot is uh, this picture here, which has you down at the bottom, uh, and Mr. Hendricks' lot there. This is the picture that, or the yeah. drawing that Mr. Kennedy was referring to earlier. My lot actually is way over here. And, 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 and where's your house in relation to the? Right here. Down just below the, uh, actually the Traster's lot. My house would be right in front of the and a little bit in front of Okay. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? If not, the hearing's closed. Board members? Discussion? Yeah. I have a thought. Um, I recognize the... Uh, concern for uh, granting setbacks. And I don't know whether we can change this thing, but uh, Mr. Hendricks suggested that he can move the barn uh, toward the house a little bit and get that into an accurate, I mean, uh, appropriately uh, situated so that, so that it is a 30-foot side setback. Uh, then we would have to consider a uh, five-foot reduction on the rear setback. Um, based on what I'm hearing, and I certainly stand to be corrected, I, I, it, it almost sounds to me as though uh, he's either going to get a barn uh, in this area or he's not going to get a barn from what I, I gather on the rest of the property. Now, if I miss something, Please correct me, but my inclination would be to say, all right, move this over, uh, pick up a 30-foot uh, setback on the side, and, and consider granting a 25-foot uh, a, a five, a five rear setback. Now, I presume, looking at uh, the Marcusi land behind him, that by suggesting his building envelope is within that circle, I, I've got to presume that the rest of that land might not be suitable too much for building. Is that a, a reasonably correct interpretation? Therefore, aside from violating the setback desires, uh, I don't think we're going to hurt anybody very badly by considering that. So that's my thought. Anybody else? Mr. Keneally? Um, let me ask a question to the chairman. Uh, would it be appropriate to request a survey, an accurate survey, and defer consideration of this until we have that? Um, toward what end? 
What is it you want to? I want to have a better understanding of where the building is sit in the mine. Um, well, any request you want to make is fine if the rest of the board votes for it and, uh, and or the applicant agrees to it. Uh, <laughs> so my hesitation is not on that subject. Uh, I'm just not 100 percent clear what we're going to uh, we're going to generate. I, I gather you're expressing some uneasiness because of the when you asked the question, you, the answer was, well, it's not exact drawing and you're not sure exactly yeah, where it fits on the land. I don't feel I have a complete understanding yeah. of what um, it looks like. Can I ask the applicant, uh, Mr. Hendrick, if you, did you uh, do any kind of survey measuring or at least uh, as a builder measuring that you're satisfied is accurate such that the second drawing, the one with just your house on it, in your view, represents a fairly accurate result or do you think uh, a survey might help you or hurt you? If you don't mind, I'll leave that suggestion laying there for a minute and see if there's other comments, and then we can come back to it. Uh, other board members want to comment on that or anything else about the application. I guess, uh, go ahead. I have a question for Bruce. Go ahead. That, uh, <coughs> Bruce, uh, assuming uh, Amory's suggestion was feasible, um, would we be creating any new, would that create any new problems that aren't identified because that wasn't a, what was applied for? Uh, it looks like there's wetlands issues and. It would not create any problems with wetlands. Um, the fact of the matter is the board can grant anything up to what was, what was advertised, but not less than that, but certainly more than that. Um, Measuring that in terms of side, side setback distance. In other words, as long as you don't grant something that's more flexible or more uh, you know, intrusive you right. than what was advertised, you can work from there down. Uh, but if I may just comment for one minute, um, it, it's a good suggestion what you said, but either the hardship criteria can be met for both or, or for none, so it wouldn't seem to be logical to me for, to do half and not the other, or just a comment. It's okay. You saved me saying it. Do you understand what he's saying? Oh, I understand. Okay. That's why I said if it's feasible. I just want to know if we even need to get to that, if, if there's going to be a, a problem, a, another problem that's not identified here by the suggestion that it the only the only thing the wetlands do basically what the wetlands did out there was the reason why it could build less than the 250 that's required is because the topography went uphill so that nothing under the ordinance if, if nothing drains towards the wetland the setback can be reduced to 100 feet so anything beyond 100 feet from that upland edge as far as the ordinance is concerned <coughs> would be a building envelope providing you can meet the setbacks to the property line. So there's no other restriction other than 100 feet from that upland edge of the wetland. Uh, for myself, I have, I, I'm in the same corner I was in the last application. I mean, I, I went up there today, looked at this, so I can see the box that he's in, both in terms of lay of the land, uh, because the land from the driveway toward the property line, which is a, is a stone wall, uh, is sloping downward and uh, pretty rough. You, the closest house that you can see from there is, geez, it looks like a quarter of a mile. And I, I drove there, well, it seemed like it was 10 miles when I drove there, but because I went to the wrong place, but uh, some distance in any event. And, uh, but the problem I have is that I, I having a struggle with this, uh, in particular with this question about the reasonable return, because 
I don't think a barn is necessarily a requirement to get a reasonable return on this piece of property, let alone uh, one that's, that needs a setback variance. Uh, the hardship question I raised earlier, and I, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with that one, but given the uh, difficulty of situating the house on this particular piece of property and the uh, effort that had to be made at the last minute, uh, which Mr. Henry described, I think I could convince myself uh, that, uh, that there is a hardship in that sense. Uh, which was not created by the owner. But the hardship that's a, that really that's addressed by this application is the hardship that's created by the desire to have a barn, which um, may or may not be necessary to, uh, you know, for functioning or for reasonable return on this house. So I'm still dancing around on that one. And I just throw those comments out for further discussion if anybody else wants to respond. <clears throat> Can we still ask the applicant question? Sure, feel free. Uh, I would ask Mr. Hennig if you could come to a microphone if you're going to get more questions of the help. Um, in, in your response to question A, um, you, you know you'd like the variance because the bond would be too close to the driveway. Could you elaborate on the hardship associated with that, the bond being too close to the driveway? And could you also define what the objective of the bond is in terms of the use of the property? Uh, well, I, I do some woodworking. I, I build and I uh, do a lot of uh, woodworking. And uh, right now I'm woodworking in my cellar. And uh, I'm hoping to put my table saw and uh, a couple of other tools in, in the barn and use that for woodworking. I don't have a walkout basement, uh, so I have to put bring plywood in through my kitchen. Mm -hmm. and push cabinets up through my bulkhead. Mm -hmm. um, Excuse me, you're talking about building in relation to your business? Right. And um, so, well, that to me is a hardship. In terms of a reasonable return, um, my point was that I put a lot of money in, into the house that I didn't think I was going to have to. I, mean, I was asking you to clarify um, the hardship associated with the barn being too close to the driveway. Oh, with it being too close to the driveway. Yeah. Um, well, in an icy situation, I'm afraid that uh, a car would go into it. I would have to put barriers of some kind um, or a plow would, would hit it because it's a very sharp turn right there. A couple of you fellas were, uh, were there this afternoon and, and it's a diff difficult driveway to, to negotiate uh, even when it's dry and uh, where it, if it were icy, it would it would be difficult to uh, you know to not hit it. So I'd probably have to put some wooden posts or something in front of it so we'd hit those instead of hitting my my, my barn. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Hendricks? As long as he's standing up there and we don't run him back and forth there. Thank you, sir. We'll try again. Right, well. uh, any further? Discussion or somebody prepared to piece together a motion? Uh, can I suggest, regardless of who makes the motion or what your goals are, that we try to find a couple of facts to fill in there, including some of the discussion we've just been having about the uh, uh, difficulty with the driveway? and the limitations created by the uh, wetlands in terms of design of that driveway and the things like that that have been discussed, which are factual statements, regardless of what conclusion you want to come to from them. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? It's not something I can do, so. Well, I would move that uh, the application, the appeal be denied because the land in question can yield a reasonable return regardless of whether the variance is granted. And the other three uh, finding or conclusions, uh, Mr. LaProd, are you? Uh, I don't have any comment on those because I, my motion is based on the fact that we can't find number one. And I don't okay. think we, we need to find all four. So if we can't find one, 
that ends the equation. Second. Um, I guess I have to exert the prerogative of the chair and say I don't agree with that conclusion. I think we need to address each of the four items and uh, say whether or not you you agree with them or disagree with them uh, or whether you you know find in favor of the application or not and uh, just leave it at that. I appreciate it if you would feel comfortable doing that. Well, uh, on, on the other, uh, I don't. Um, you know, the need for a variance is due to unique circumstances of the property um, and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, the granting of the variance would not alter the essential character of the locality. Um, and the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Whoever seconded it, uh, okay with that? Now discussion of the motion. It's pretty hard to add anything to that if uh, the, the general reaction is that the land and the residence as it presently exists can yield a re uh, could, could yield a reasonable return, then the granting of this variance uh, uh, will have to be denied. I mean, it's fairly simple. Any other discussion? Any question about the motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion? Signify by raising your hand. <clears throat> Anybody opposed? I see none. Sorry, Mr. Hendrick. You're going to have to put some posts up, I guess. Great. Next item on the agenda. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I'm sorry. Take a three minute break. Sure. Take a three minute break. Not three and a half, not two and a half. Three. My stopwatch is running.
And uh, Damn Chen is missing again. Sorry about that. I keep burying my agenda under the blizzard of paperwork up here. The next item of business is item uh, D3, which <coughs> is to hear the request of Laura Gibbons, 3 Pine Point Road, tax map U35, lot 5 through 61, excuse me, lot 5-61, uh, for a conditional use permit to operate a preschool daycare facility from within the existing dwelling unit. Uh, is there someone here representing Laura Gibbons? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, have to be excused on this particular issue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Houghton, are you, would you be willing to explain, please, the question that's been raised about the reason for your recusing yourself? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Gibbon's father just uh, signed a contract with me to buy my house yesterday. I think it's appropriate if I step down. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, the only thing I have to add is since the application, I have found out that there was a prior daycare in my home, the existing home now, where I plan to hold it. Some years ago that probably three different people I've met since have told me, and I also found out there was a kindergarten once in the existing neighborhood that people use to send their children to. And the other thing, um, I know people are concerned about traffic, but I've been doing this for six years, and a lot of the traffic, a lot of the kids, I'm hoping to pull some kids from the existing neighborhood, which are walkers, and then most parents usually carpool with others, is what has been my previous experience. Like, kids who are in another daycare, the daycare mom will drop two to three off at a time, which would alleviate a lot of the cars and the traffic. By that, when you say other daycare, you mean in Colorado? Yes. Where you lived previously? Well, even my son's in a preschool now, and we carpool. Um, how many children did you anticipate your, the permit, if granted, would allow up to 12, you expect? The max I would want is eight. Uh, When I uh, drove by there today, I noticed that um, the only way out of your situation is to pull into your driveway, and which, which you indicated was the drop-off point in your drawing, uh, and then backing out into the highway, the roadway, since uh, Pine Point is a dead-end circle. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a, a correct, yes. correct understanding? Yes. Um, And what would be the hours um, to run this? Would not be earlier than 8.30 and would not go later than actually 2.30. I'm sorry, what was the last? 8.30 and no later than 2.30 would be the hours. So that you're saying that the parents would be arriving just before 8.30 and, and just before 2.30 to pick up? Just after 2.30 or just at 2.30. Uh, I'll get to you in a minute, Bruce. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Yes. Your application states that there's a need for child care in the area. Yes. Is, have there been well, assessment studies? When I have called related? before I even moved here, it was very difficult for me to find a preschool that was available for my four-year-old. They were either full, had waiting lists, or were extremely expensive, or f too many kids. And what, this is what I've been doing for six years, and I assumed that if they're all full, there's actually a need for it here as well. And I had found this out before I even moved to this town. Thank you. Uh, on the way from your place, I drove by Viking Daycare, which is newly opened, and there's a big vacancy sign on the, on the post. Have you talked I about don't know anything about that if it's newly opened. You know where Viking is? I believe so to the right going out on Scott Just Dyer. across from the, the, yes. the retirement home. But that's home. a more of a daycare as well. I'm just talking about preschool. There will be no daycare. So it will not be parents that are working that need somewhere for the kids to go for the day. 
So you're really seeing this as a teaching institution, yes, the, not just a care institution? Right. It's not at all. It's a teaching institution where I was planning to do it just three days. There would be two sessions a day, but it would just be three days instead of the full five. Other questions for Ms. Gibbons? Uh, stay there if you would, Ms. Okay. Gibbons, just for a second, because uh, I noticed in uh, one of the, once again, my piles aren't too organized here, but we did receive a series of letters which uh, Mr. Smith passed along to the board uh, just before the meeting. And uh, and one of those I noticed was highlighted. Did you do that highlighting, Bruce? Or it's highlighted because that section okay. uh, only applies to this application. The rest applies to a home daycare that uh, is in the process of getting approval. Um, I'm referring to a letter, handwritten letter from uh, Barbara and Nicholas Young. And Uh, it refers to uh, their awareness that a, another home daycare permit has been applied for elsewhere in our neighborhood. Um, and at this letter, by the way, is objecting to your proposal and that additional proposal uh, doubles their objections. Um, can you tell us, Mr. Smith, where that other, when you say home daycare, that means six or fewer children, right? The other daycare that mentioned in this paragraph is, is, is Gibbons, this, this application. The rest is, is in relation to four Evergreen Circle, which is a home daycare. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, now I see. Now, if I look at the front of the letter, I can see that it's addressing the uh, proposal at four Evergreen Circle. <clears throat> and the highlighted section relates to the Gibbons application. Right. So the other home daycare center, which means six or fewer children uh, proposed, is that four Evergreen Circle. And frankly, I'm not sure exactly where that is. Is it in the Brentwood neighborhood? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, could, could you clarify, will the four Evergreen Circle be requiring a variance from this board as well? Neither one of them require a variance, uh, but if, you, if you're asking if it will require a conditional use permit, yes. at this time, it, what, the ordinance, what the ordinance requires is that home daycare, which is six or less, uh, there's a notification process whereby all the, all the neighbors about us are notified by mail of the pending application and if there's no comments um, that are relevant uh, to the application then the, at, the, at the end of 30 day period the application will be approved by, by the code office. If there is uh, evidence that, that, that the, the applicant may not meet the conditional use standards then it will be referred to the Board of Appeals uh, for the April meeting. And that's, I have had some letters come in, I haven't made a determination yet what's going to happen to that application. So. Uh, Ms. Gibbons, have you seen uh, any or all of the letters that uh, I haven't seen any of them. In the, uh, uh, I assume that some of the people that have written these letters are here so they can address the specific issues, but I want to draw your attention in particular to one because it, it was addressed to uh, Mr. Smith uh, and asked some questions. Strangely enough, there's no signature on the letter, but Bruce, you must know who it was, Teresa Fox, because you replied. Uh, I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, it came in the email. Okay. Um, and Teresa Fox indicates that she's the uh, vice president of the Brentwood West Association. And you have a copy of that now? Which one by Teresa Fox? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it starts out, dear Bruce, I wish to respond to the current situation of the two daycares. Um. And right in the middle, it's a, there's a highlighted. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. My hope First is to one. keep that okay. request. Um, I'm bringing this up because there's some specific issues that she raises that you may want to uh, address. And I realize I'm pulling this on you at the last minute, but uh, it may be helpful. Uh, for example, in the first one, she addresses the issue of fencing. 
and perhaps you could describe to the board what your intentions are with regard to fencing. The fencing, I believe, is on the Evergreen Circle one. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I'm going to get. Let's, uh, does the back of your uh, property, where you have the play area, uh, come up against the wetland area? Yes. I know it's a conservation area, is it? Uh, yeah, the conservation area, yes. Okay. The second half of that letter is, is okay. got to do with three pipes. Um, First question she raises specifically with regard to yours is 12 cars per session in and out uh, for two sessions means 48 more cars or 48 more trips would be a more accurate way of putting it. Uh, and <clears throat> expresses concern about the cul-de-sacs for children play, et cetera. Do you want to? Uh, yes, because the hours I would be doing it, the only children that would be around during the day would either be under five, which they're usually supervised by parents, and the times that the kids would be coming would be, you know, times when there actually would be no children on the block, and it's a school, so it would not be run when Cape is closed for snow days. It would not be run for spring break. It would not be run for winter break. It would not even be in session during the summer. So when all the kids were home, that are you know older and that would be playing in the streets, my school wouldn't be open. So it would just be open during the school year, which in turns would be the kids who are under that five-year-old age. And so really the only kids in the cul-de-sac at that time would be kids five and under who are usually supervised by their parents. On uh, her second paragraph, she talks about Brentwood Rest being a residential zone and would not support a conditional zoning change. Just for the record, this does not involve a conditional zoning change, uh, the zoning in that area uh, does allow conditional use approval for uh, this kind of facility provided that it meets the criteria in the ordinance. Mm. And th the last question addresses the wetlands thing we were mis uh, mentioning a minute ago. Uh, do you have any reason to believe that this encroaches directly or indirectly on the wetland area there? It's my assumption, I haven't visited the site, but it's my assumption that, that the defense will follow the yard area to the rear of your house. If that's not the case, then we'd have to confine it to that area. Right, no, I would, um, I haven't lived there long. I don't know how wet the land is, but so far right around the house where the children will be in the walkout basement, 90% of the time when it's a school, not a daycare, you really only go out for 20 minutes for the two and a half hour session. So it'd be 40 minutes total a day, and I was just gonna use the area closest to the house. Well, the, the, issue, the issue would be that, that as long as there's a, an existing yard there, then that yard could be fenced in and used irregardless yes. of the wetland yes, boundaries. It could. But if you wanted to go further into the wetland, then that could pose a problem. Okay. Uh, yes, go ahead. How many days a week do you plan on operating? I was planning on doing it three days a week. Which days? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, there's another letter in the file, just for the record, from Sandra J. Curry objecting uh, to the uh, proposal on, the, on several grounds, uh, one relating to the traffic issue, one to uh, one to the potential impact on property values, uh, wetlands are mentioned and uh, the fact that it's a residential neighborhood. There's another letter signed by a number of uh, members of the Younger family uh, saying they can't attend tonight and their primary concern is safety because of the traffic. Um, a fear that people will use the circle as a turnaround uh, potentially affect the children playing there. You've already commented on that. Um, residential neighborhood concern, and uh, I guess that's it. Uh, Ivan and Susan Most signed a letter. Uh, they live in the same area and uh, object because it's a narrow street and the vehicle traffic would be a uh, 
problem for eight to 12 children indicated they would not have a problem with an ap application for a daycare center of six or under. In other words, a home daycare center. And that's it. <clears throat> Do you have any other comments you want to make, um, Gibbons? We're going the only to thing I could say is there already was an existing daycare in the house already, and really it wouldn't affect anyone in the neighborhood because they'll only be in my section of the house. And aside from the traffic, like I said, the most would be eight, and that's if they don't carpool and they don't, I don't have any walkers who their parents would walk them. And as far as traffic with the kids in the neighborhood, again, once again, there will be no kids in the neighborhood that are over five. There will all be under school age children in the neighborhood at the times I'm planning on doing it, and I would assume most parents would be watching their children at that time. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Gibbons while she's there? Yes. Could you give us more details on what you understand the, the daycare center that was run there previously? I just I think it was a home daycare that was run there previously. Do you have any idea how many children it? I don't know. I was told by three different people that there was one definitely in the basement of the, where I'm planning to do it to walk out. You don't know how many people? I do not know. And I do know that before I even purchased the house, I found out what kind of a neighborhood it was and that it was a residential use neighborhood. And that's what, you know, made me go ahead and purchase the house. So I was told this was allowed or could be allowed in this neighborhood because most schools are in neighborhoods anyways. And now, it, and not to be on the negative side, but most of the people who are complaining about it don't even really, are not really that close to my house in general, and most do not have even young children anymore. But they have admitted that they sent their children to the kindergarten that was in the neighborhood when they had younger children. So to me, it just seems like it was all right then when it was convenient, but it's not now that they're older and don't want the noise. Do you know where on Brentwood, well, let me ask him. Pine Point Road, are there any bus stops? No. Yes. Yes. It's on Brentwood. Wait a minute. We'll get it's not on Pine Point Road. It's on Brentwood. It's on Brentwood. It's on Brentwood. And how many are there on Brentwood? Bus stops? Yeah. I only know the one right there by my neighborhood. There's That's right there. I have a question for Mr. Smith. Is, has there, is there any known history of what happened, what the experience in the neighborhood was when the daycare was operating in there with the former owner? I wasn't aware until now that of the history. Or any complaints filed? If you'll just wait a minute, we will get to you, please. I, I until now, I, 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 I didn't know there was any history, so I haven't had a chance to review the files. Any other questions from the board for Ms. Gibbons? I, I have another question. Um, there's a suggestion in one of the letters we got. Excuse me if you address this already. I don't think you did. Um, someone says that uh, uh, they were told by a broker that potential buyers have changed their mind about. I don't know anything about that. Right? Yeah. Um, about property values in the neighborhood because of the proposed facility. Do you know anything about that either? No. That would speak to that issue at all? Um, no, and I just. Um, I talked to a woman already who had just bought a purchase house right on my street. I happened to talk to her actually by accident. She called for my daughter, her daughter did, and I explained to her what I was doing and she had no problem with it either. And she's going to be purchasing a home right there in the neighborhood, in the cul-de-sac there. And uh, Otherwise I had, I don't believe any realtor, you know, my realtor was aware of what I was going to do. And, and you said you're, you're expecting maximum of eight kids. Correct? Maximum. Um, do you know, have you done any uh, market research or any sort of analysis that uh, gives you confidence that not all of those people, that some of those eight will be from the neighborhood and walkers? As Just I know it's a kid-oriented neighborhood. There are lots of children, and I'm going by basically where I was in Colorado. It was the same type of neighborhood exactly with young families and children. and. The parents needed it and they liked it. It was so convenient and close that they could just walk their child. That do it. Thank you, Ms. Gibbons. Anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of this application? You can sit down, thanks. Um, 
If not, uh, those who wish to speak in opposition. My name is uh, Donald McKinney. I live at 10 Pine Point Road. I'm sorry I didn't submit uh, two letters of opposition prior to the meeting, one from ourselves and one from our neighbor, the, the Beelings at, I think, number nine Pine Point Road. My main concern is, is the traffic issue. It's a fairly narrow road. It curves near their house. Uh, when you walk along that road, you realize you can't see around the corner into the cul-de-sac if you're near their house. I believe that probably most people will choose to drive by their house and turn in the cul-de-sac to, to turn around and leave the neighborhood. Their driveway is a fairly small driveway. It slopes away from the road, down from the road. It would be difficult to turn in and back out of that driveway. Uh, I'm not sure what they would be doing in their own vehicles at the time. So really, my main concern is the safety issue. Uh, there probably will be kids under five years of age and they probably will be around that circle or along the road there, and they may not have parents within sight all the time. And my main concern is, is the, uh, the traffic and the danger uh, from that traffic. It's a pretty congested little area when you have vehicles parked on one side of the road. It narrows the road significantly. I'm not sure what the, the site uh, what they officially, the uh, site requirements are in a situation like that, but I, I feel as if that it would be dangerous as far as the available site that you have driving down the road. Uh, Tell me again what your address, your residence uh, address is. 10 Pine Point Road. 10. I'm at the base of the cul-de-sac. Okay. And, you know, being a parent myself of uh, two young, older boys that would be in school at the time, I know that uh, we had to take them to daycare, and I, well, I know this isn't a daycare, it's a preschool, but I think that uh, parents will, may have other things to do. They may have other things on their mind when they drop off the children and pick them up, and sometimes they may be in a hurry, and my, my concern would be the safety. That's, that's really about the size of it. Thank you, sir. Questions for Mr. McKinney? Yeah, I have a question. You, you, um, you made a comment about the, uh, you didn't think they'd be able to drop off and pick up in the driveway. Uh, but could you uh, describe for me the best you can what the driveway looks like, and what its dimensions are? Uh, well, like I say, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fairly short driveway, and it slopes fairly steeply down to the garage. Uh, I've noticed since they, the people that live there now, they quite often park on the roadway, actually. It, it's, a, it's a difficult drive. It's not that difficult, but it would be, I think most people would not turn on that driveway to, to pick up and, and drop off the children. And even if they did that, they would have to back out up a hill into the roadway to do so. Most traffic, when it turns on that road, they go to the cul-de-sac and turn around. Did you live there during the time when there was a daycare? I have, the I've, we've been there 10 years, and I've never known that there was a daycare in the neighborhood or a preschool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. I'd like to just give you these two letters from myself and our neighbors. Sure. Why don't you come to Bruce, if you would? Your neighbor's name was? Uh, Donald McKinney. Oh. Your, your neighbor's name? Uh, the neighbors of uh, Craig and Nancy Beeland. Beeland? Yeah, Beeland. Thank you. Someone else wishes to speak on this subject? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Rosalie Blankhorn. I live at 52 Brentwood Road. Um, Can you, I'm sorry, the echo here, I'm having a hard time with names tonight. Rosalie Blankhorn. Blankhorn. 52 okay. Brentwood Great. Road. Thank you very much. My property uh, abuts the Gibbons property uh, in the back. Um, my concern would be echoing um, the other concerns as voiced in the letter as being a, a matter of concern for safety. Um, 
Pine Point Road is a very small cul-de-sac. I think most people, as he said, would choose to drive down the cul-de-sac, turn around, and come back and face Brentwood, if you will, uh, picking up their children. If you had individuals that did choose to park in the driveway, uh, with eight children, you're only going to be able to park one or two cars in the driveway. Um, so everybody else would have to obviously park on the road in front of somebody else's house. Um, you can obviously see that I'm a registered nurse. Uh, from a purely personal point of view, um, I do have to work nights occasionally. <coughs> um, and my bedroom faces her backyard. And although this would not occur all that often, when I'm not talking about every night or every week, um, not everyone is off on the hours of 8 to 2.30. Um, you know, I need to sleep during those hours when I've been called in. Um, again, that's a purely selfish and personal concern. Um, and lastly, I would add that um, I have lived in the neighborhood since 1982 um, when my husband and I were married. Um, and my husband purchased the property at 52 Brentwood Road in 1973. And to his knowledge, there has never been a nursery school or a daycare um, that was located in that residence. And I'm not really sure, in the interest of fairness, what that has to do with this particular um, application. I would like to add that um, this isn't about being against children. This isn't about uh, being pro or negative daycare or uh, nursery schools. But with the application of Mrs. Downer at four Evergreen Circle for six children, and with the existing daycare center and nursery school that opened up on Scott Dyer Road, which is less than a quarter of a mile from this particular daycare, um, I have to ask uh, whether this is really necessary or not. Um, again, there is a residential character of the street that I think many of us are concerned will drop away if uh, home businesses are allowed to come in, um, you know, what's next? Uh, if we can have two daycare centers or two, one daycare and one preschool, if someone else wants to open up a preschool. Uh, you know, we're a pretty small neighborhood, and that amount of traffic increase on the road definitely, in my opinion, again, uh, increases the likelihood of, of uh, someone getting hurt. Um, in addition to that, I have a couple of questions for the board. Um, if Ms. Gibbons uh, um, wants to expand her operating hours beyond the hours that she has applied for, what would be the procedure for her to do that? Well, first of all, the board would have to put conditions on the permit uh, if they granted one. Which so would she, would need to to, she would need to do that in another hearing such as this? And if she wanted to change it, she'd have to come back through the code enforcement officer and ask for a modification. And uh, he'd have to make a judgment as to whether the board needed to be involved in that. I will say that uh, we have asked the town council to transfer conditional uses away from us. And I don't know where, would this be included in that? Uh, this requires site kind of plan review from planning board. So yes, it would be yeah. one that-, that uh, Because be both shifted. the planning board and the zoning board under the current ordinance are required to review these. And because the planning board has a much more uh, a much broader power to deal with details of the design of any proposal. Uh, we've asked to be relieved of that. So it, if that happens, the answer to your question would be no, because we wouldn't see it, but the planning board would. And her application would limit her to eight children, no more than that? Well, again, the law, the ordinance allows up to 12 in this kind of a setting. And if the board were to approve it and choose to put a condition on it, that would limit it to eight. It's so she would not need another permit to increase to 12 children? If, Is that what if you're saying? Board, well, if the board put a condition on it, which limited it to eight, I see. then yes, the same answer to the per as I gave you the first question. OK, thank you very much. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Just a point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the, the 12 that you, have, you're, that you have in your mind may be a state thing. Uh, the ordinance here says seven or more. So it could be any number above seven, depending on what the application is for and what the board chooses to do with conditions. OK, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, nevertheless, the board could set a number if it chose to that's approve it. And that number could be eight. So. 
Yes, ma'am. Hi, Diane Carroll. I'm at One Pine Point Road. I, I'm right next door to the Gibbons property. Um, at the risk of being repetitive, I'm really worried about the traffic issue. Um, we do have kids that are 13 and 14 and coming home from school at just about 2.30. I'm worried about it. It's going to increase the traffic on Pine Point Road substantially, and it's already enough. I mean, we pay taxes to live in this residential section, which is now being, and I understand that it's all, you know, up to code and everything, but it's being, it's not going to be a residential section for long if this keeps going. I mean, it, I'm frightened about it. I really am for the little kid. And there's so many small children on our on our street and in our neighborhood. Between the daycare that's opened and this, it's just incredible. I mean, I've really been watching lately. Just with the daycare going down the street, you can see the increase in the traffic. You're referring now to the one on uh, to the Viking. Evergreen. Daycare? Evergreen. Evergreen. Uh, I wasn't aware that was in operation. Oh yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. She has been she has been told there's been a letter sent to her um, that really has nothing to do with this application. But I understand. Uh, I'm just trying to get a lay of the land here. Right. See, it's two separate issues, but as a neighborhood, we're looking at it as one big issue because okay. it's just one huge increase in stress. Frankly, you know, my bedroom window is is right there, right there next to the given side, and that's not their fault. And this is nothing personal. It's just we're concerned. We're concerned. What's next? Is this a Pandora's box we're opening? You know, okay, the, so there can be traffic in and out and a real active business. Well, gee, what will I try? And and I have to say, I've been there for 15 years, and and I've known every owner of the house next door, close. And there's never been any daycare facility, preschool, or anything that existed there ever. But those are my concerns, and and they're really, really deep concerns for the neighborhood as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carroll. Any questions from the board? Uh, let me just go back and clarify that. I, I guess I missed your point earlier with relation to the Evergreen Circle that there is something actually operating there, and you're now in discussions with the operator about permit requirements? Or? She's, for Evergreen Circle has applied for a home daycare for up to six children. Uh, in the meantime, I've had some complaints from, from neighbors that there, is, uh, that there is some activity going on that, that okay. shouldn't be going on, and I've right. contacted her twice, and I've written a letter uh, threatening legal action um, should she continue. Okay. That explains my confusion. Thank you. Uh, anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Yes, sir. My name is uh, Dick Herman. I, I live on the Evergreen Circle that you were just alluding to. Uh, I have lived there for 25 years. Uh, I have known just about everybody in our neighborhood from the day they moved in to the day they've moved out. I would like to put forth to the board that we have not only a neighborhood of children, we have a neighborhood of people like myself that are retired. And the addition of the additional traffic uh, in the neighborhood, the addition of the diff uh, additional noise and the harassment because these children are not supervised is just not exactly what we expected when we bought a house in a residentially classified zone. I would like to address some of the things that were said earlier that nobody around the current applicant's house uh, finds it objectionable. You have it all written. If you look at the addresses of those people that wrote you uh, descending letters on this, they're all her neighbors. Mrs. Carroll, her neighbors. So she's surrounded with people that object. Uh, knowing most of the people in the neighborhood, discussing this with them, and worrying again about our future or what, what is going on there. If we start one business and that leads to another business, you know, where do we draw the line? Uh, the traffic problem is something that 
is got to be really looked at because unlike what has been purported, the children are not supervised. There are people in that neighborhood that have great numbers of children. Uh, the burden is get the kids off the school. And once they're off the school, there's two or three little ones on their big wheels going down the driveways, out shooting across the lawns, into the middle of the road. It creates a hazard. Since they have opened Forever Green Circle, I can't back out of my driveway. I've had the children in my yard. I've had them throwing ice balls at my car, at my house, unsupervised. This is a business. This should not be allowed in a neighborhood such as Brentwood West. Thank you. Excuse me just a second. Uh, you mean the children in Evergreen Circle facility are not supervised? You're talking about generally? They are not supervised properly. Thank you. And again, I'd like to stress that we do have quite a few retired people, uh, several of which aren't in the state at the moment because they're enjoying the warm climate. Uh, and I have been in touch with all of them. I believe you have a letter from the Youngs. That's one of them. And they're all deathly set against this. I hope you keep that in mind. Questions for Mr. Herman? I guess not. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to speak on this issue? I'm Teresa Fox, and I live at 35 Brentwood. And I just wanted to share that um, I am vice president of the association. And we had a meeting in which we invited um, both Rhonda and um, Lori to discuss what their plans were. So we did give them an opportunity to share with us what they were planning and to ask questions. Um, and there is still a lot of major concern. Again, it's mainly traffic. It's that there would be two daycares in the area, one currently operating without a fence and unlicensed, as far as we know. Um, the other concerns I received from different people in the area that may have sent you letters, one was at Pine Point um, due to their driveway, and also uh, that it's a narrow road, that when you have snow banks, a lot of cars dropping off kids, it's a very narrow road. And again, it's a safety issue for the children. Um, and I wanted to just submit this. This was an, a flyer that was at Shaw's, I believe, that shows um, the different sessions that she'd be planning. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Fox has handed me a, what purports to be an advertising flyer, uh, which says preschool, love and learn preschool now enrolling for late spring and fall 1999 classes, referring to Ms. Gibbons' uh, proposed facility. Uh, Oops, I'm sorry. thought my reading it would be enough. Anything else, Ms. Fox? Any questions for Ms. Fox? Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? I'm Pam Herman. I live at 10 Evergreen Circle, across from 4 Evergreen Circle. Hearn. And I realize that's not the issue. Did you say your name is Hearn? Herman. Pam. Herman. OK, I'm sorry. And they, obviously, I basically agree and echo the sentiments and concerns of safety and other issues of people in the neighborhood. Uh, I'll just like to say that one of our neighbors went through the list of 61 families in Brentwood West, and 50% of them uh, retiree families, it's amazing. And I think it's basically because we've been there so long. Uh, we've been there since 1976. And we love the neighborhood and we've grown up with it and really considered it to be a residential neighborhood. And I guess it's kind of shocking to me, and obviously not to you, that it doesn't mean that businesses, um, excuse me, <laughs> that businesses could not be in the neighborhood. I guess I kind of thought that a residential neighborhood was a neighborhood for families and not for businesses of any kind. 
in the home. And we obviously have a concern because of this element that other businesses might come in. And perhaps you could address that issue of what other businesses would be allowed to come into our neighborhood if daycare is allowed. Would that mean like craft shops would be allowed in people's homes? I'm, I'm not sure just what else might be allowed to come in under the, the ordinance that this meets. And we'd like to, I'd just like to um, state one additional comment that property values, I think, would be affected by this. Uh, I think you, if you think yourself when you're moving into a neighborhood, any type of business, and I know myself, if I'm driving down a street, like on 77, there's a major daycare facility there, and there's a big chain link fence or something around it. And without even knowing, I think you drive by and you say, well, there must be daycare there. Because I think chain link fences and things like this go with daycare. And I don't want our neighborhood to be a, a neighborhood of chain link fences or businesses. And I'd like you to consider uh, denying some of these applications, or all of them, obviously, uh, because of precedence. I think that it would set a negative precedence for people moving into residential neighborhoods if things can be opened up to businesses and other elements like this. I think we'd like to keep our residential neighborhoods purely that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Herman. Uh, questions for Ms. Herman? Uh, so we don't leave your question hanging out there. I, uh, the ordinance does provide for some certain home businesses in residential zones. Uh, and perhaps Mr. Smith can expand on what kinds of things might be possible beyond a daycare preschool type city setting in that kind of a zone. Well, basically, the ordinance was, was uh, originally drafted from a, what we call a comprehensive plan uh, that was, was done um, through studies of what, what would work in a residential district. Uh, and and the, the ordinance does allow such things as uh, home businesses, uh, daycare facilities, home daycares, uh, home occupations, I already said. It's pretty limited to home daycare, home businesses, uh, home occupations, daycare facilities, schools. And then there's, there's two that's unique to Cape Elizabeth. Um, don't know the history, but it's a, a farm and fish market and a boat repair facility. We can guess, though, can't we? <laughs> But um, it's not unique to Cape Elizabeth. Uh, daycare facilities and, and uh, home, home occupations are, are something that, that most communities do allow in a residential situation. Does that answer your question, Ms. Herman, as best we can in this quick situation? Anybody else wishes to uh, speak on this issue? Seeing no one, excuse me, are you stirring back there? Okay. <laughs> I have no young children anymore. My two children are one in grad school and one in college, so my Could concerns. We get your name for the oh, sorry, Sandra Curry, 13 Brentwood. Thank you. My concerns are not personal for my children at all, but for the many other children in the neighborhood. Um, when she says that all other children will be in school at the time that her program is in session, um, I find that a little hard to believe. There are three bus stops in the neighborhood: one at Cherry Circle, one at the entrance to Pine Point, and one at Evergreen. And between the hours of 8 and 8.30, when presumably people would be dropping off at her facility, those three areas are loaded with children waiting for buses. So at the time that we would be having 8 to 12 cars coming in to drop off at her preschool, we would have dozens and dozens of children at these three areas where traffic would need to go by. There's no way to get to Pine Point without going by either Cherry Circle or Evergreen Circle or the entrance to Pine Point. Um, not only are the school children out there at that time, but all, you know, there are many parents out there. There are many little children scattering around. There are pets. It, it's a very busy, busy time, and, a, and it's a safety concern. I leave for work at that time, and I'm very conscious you know, for myself to back out of my driveway and to be very wary of all of the little things that are moving at that time of the morning. 
Now, somebody coming into the neighborhood from somewhere else, are they going to be very aware of this? Um, it's a major concern. Um, also, the residential thing. I've been in that neighborhood since 1981, and there's never been you know, a preschool or daycare facility in that neighborhood. I've been on the board since 1981, and know the 61 families, who they are, and whether they pay their dues, and what their names are. Um, it's been a residential neighborhood. It's a very active neighborhood. There's lots of young families, and we really like that feel. And to have businesses in there is, is upsetting to, to many people, many of whom weren't able to be here tonight. But it's, you know, it's a major concern of the majority of that neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Curry. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ms. Curry? I actually, I do. Mr. Keneally? What are the school bus schedules in that area? Um, I, as I say, I don't have young children anymore, but I know they pick up around 815 to 820, the elementary school. The middle school does not come through the neighborhood, their bus. They would be earlier. I'm going to say some people, 730 for the middle school. The other point is the middle schoolers are dropped off and will be coming home. The high school's out at 2, so those kids are back walking through the neighborhood. The middle schoolers are out, I believe, at 220, so they're walking back th into the neighborhood or dropped off on Scott Dyer and walking through the neighborhood. I think I also mentioned in my letter the fact that, you know, where is all this traffic coming from to get to Brentwood but down Scott Dyer Road in front of the schools at an extremely busy time when people are dropping off and there's tons of traffic going in and out of the school driveways at that time. There's two crossing guards needed up there in front of the school at that time. Um, and, and the same would be in the afternoon at 2.30. You've got crossing guards and you've got kids coming out of school from 2 o'clock on, and that is an extremely busy area up at the top of the hill. You know, from 7 o'clock until 8.30, quarter of 9, and from 2 until 3.30. And that area would also be impacted as well as our neighborhood. I mean, Scott Dyer isn't a really safe road to be on either, and that has way more traffic than it already needs, as any of us who drive it know. So that would also be impacted with the additional potential 48 trips of 12 times four kids, times four trips. Thank you, Ms. Curry. Any mm -hmm. further questions? Thank you. Anyone else that I haven't seen here? Mr. Shimano? Good evening. I live in uh, 40 Brentwood. Uh, I'm uh, fairly new uh, by mean that I, I, we've been uh, living there about a year and a uh, few months. The, one of the reasons that we ch have chosen to live in the Brentwood area is because of uh, after researches is that most peaceful neighborhood that we could afford. And uh, that was a very attractive part. And uh, I also, most of the daytime, uh, I'm home. As a, uh, my job requires uh, me to be at work in the evening, and I get to observe a lot of the traffic flows and, uh, and whatnot, activities of the Brentwood area. Uh, there was one time there was detour. They closed off the uh, part of uh, Scott Dyer Road, and uh, uh, this was uh, uh, traffic. Uh, not, not so much I was concerned about amount of traffic, but uh, whoever drives through Brentwood Road tend to speed up uh, unnecessary, and that is still going on right now. I think uh, mostly non-resident people who go through there the street tend to uh, not to observe the speed limit and uh, uh, sometimes going 35 a mile uh, uh, per hour in a very narrow street, which is about 23 foot wide. Uh, in average, Brentwood is, I think, isn't it? About 23 foot. And, and, and you know, um, I am, uh, we have also a, a young son who goes to the elementary school, and uh, uh, during the hour of uh, operation for this preschool, uh, he's not home. But I just also want to mention about that there are awfully a lot of uh, older folks living there. And uh, if there's a traffic flow uh, in increasing some numbers, and uh, they have some uh, uh, danger of uh, uh, endangering these folks because of people driving in excess speed, and uh, that's my concern, uh, as well as uh, safety for children. 
And um, I, I don't think there'll be police could be there all the time enforcing this speed limit and the things like that. So that's my concern. Also, the, just for information, the, there's a school bus come to pick up elementary school kids between 8.15 and 8.25. Sometimes it varies, depending on traffic. Also, about um, uh, between 11.30 and uh, 11.45, there's a kindergarten uh, drop-off sometime. So like, uh, I have nothing against the education and preschool, but just I'm very concerned about traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shimano. Uh, any questions? For you? Seeing none. Have we exhausted? No, we haven't. Just exhausted us. That's all. <laughs> My name is Betsy Moyer. I live at 27 Brentwood, and um, which is about out eight houses away down the street on the western. Um, side of Brentwood. Uh, my concern is the layout of Pine Point Road. Um, I understand that the Gibbons house has a fenced-in backyard, which is fine. Most of the houses on Pine Point have wet backyards, small backyards, and as a result, they're really not used. If you go on if you spend any time on Pine Point Ride Road, you will find that most of the kids school age, preschool, you know, whatever. Um, they're not in their backyards. They're together in people's driveways or in the street, especially the cul-de-sac at, at the dead end part of Pine Point. And I'm concerned about um, safety factors. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for Ms. Moore? Guess not. Almost everybody's spoken. Has anybody left that? Uh we haven't heard from that wants to speak. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to about to give Ms. Gibbons a chance to speak too because she's been, uh, you know, sort of overwhelmed here by the crowd. But feel free to finish it up. I just wanted to point out at, at this time where Pine Point empties onto Brentwood Road, there is no stop sign, and it's kind of ambiguous as who's going to stop at that intersection. When you come to that, sometimes cars are coming from different directions. That's also where the bus stop is right there. That's where the kids congregate at those times of day when they get, go to school and come back from school. So it, it and I would really re hope that the board or the planning board would take a look at that site and see how the road curves and see how the trees and bushes block the view as you go around that corner into Pine Point Circle you can't see very far ahead of you, and it, it wouldn't take much for an accident to happen. That's all I had to add. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to declare this side of the hearing closed, and in fairness, a couple more minutes to uh, Ms. Gibbons if you want it. The only thing I have to really add is, first of all, when I run a preschool, the parents are not allowed to drop the kids off prior to only five minutes before, so there would never be anyone before 825. And usually the buses are gone, because my children, 810, 815 is when they're picked up every day, because I usually watch them when they're out there. Second of all, my times do not have to be exactly those times. I can make it 9 to 1130, you know, and then there's no schools at 9, no bus stops. Those were just what I had had before. You know, they're not set that I have to have those exact hours. You know, so if that's a big concern, even though the buses, I was going around the bus schedule, there are no junior high buses that come in. And um, I was trying to go around the bus schedule, knowing that the kids are picked up between 8.10 and 8.20, that I would also save that time. But like I said, those are just times that I've had before. I can also adjust it 15 minutes to a half hour either direction, as long as it's two and a half hours. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any questions for Ms. Gibbons? I guess not. Thank you. Uh, we'll declare the hearing closed and uh, it's open for board discussion. This is a uh, permitted conforming use. Um, and the big question really is traffic safety and how, it, how the traffic impacts children in the street, I think it's written out. Um, I know one of the neighbors did write a, a letter that proposed sort of a compromise. I guess it was uh, the most, and I wonder if they have a uh, 
motion fashioned around the Aletta might you know, be. Can you fine. tell me what you're referring to so we can all be on the same? Yes, um, Ivan and Susan Most wrote a letter that talked about um, they would not object to a daycare application with six children or under of the application for, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. for eight or more children successive. And I wonder, since uh, Ms. Gibbons, Ms. Gibbons does propose to have a certain amount of neighborhood walkers, whether we could fashion an approval that would limit the number of cars to something like six, number of children to eight, and that might be a compromise that would control things to a degree that might not lead to problems. Just enter that as a suggestion rather than a motion. Yeah. To, to okay. Say, Anybody else want to? Yes, I keep looking over here, but <laughs> Amory's sitting down there. So. Uh, anybody else want to uh, take up a discussion on that proposal or anything else that you want to talk about? <clears throat> I will say when I was down there myself uh, this afternoon, I, uh, uh, I didn't do a traffic survey in the sense of looking for trees that hide line of sight and stuff like that, but I did First of all, I'll go by a school bus uh, up further up Brentwood, closer to Scott Dyer, and uh, sitting there waiting for some reason. And uh, we got when I got down to Pine Point, I've been back in that area for quite a while. Uh, there, the uh, subject house, if you will, is is uh, two houses in from uh, Brentwood, and. Uh, two houses further down the road, there were at least four or five kids playing in the road, some younger, some probably eight, 10, 12, somewhere in that range. I didn't pay that much attention, but it was clearly being used as a playground. Uh, and I didn't, for that reason, go to the circle. I went back into the driveway across the street from uh, Miss Gibbons' house and drove out that way. Um, and I did notice uh, the driveway, uh, which had one car in it uh, this afternoon, uh, was perhaps two and a quarter cars, two and a half cars wide, just by my glance, and fairly short and downhill to the garage. Uh, so that somebody else mentioned that, uh, which strikes me as a potential problem in the wintertime. But uh, uh, so I just wanted to pass on those observations in case you didn't get down there, uh, which is possible. Actually, I, I drove down there too, and right. I, <clears throat> I did drive into the circle, as neighbors suggested. That's an logical turnaround, and uh, there were children and parents playing in the street together. So it's clearly a play area on that, that street. Yeah. Sort of a suburban Brooklyn where everybody right. plays on the street right. and the fire hydrants on, huh? Um, so from that point of view, I, I had concern. I drove around up Brentwood and then stopped and looked back into the backyard. And, and aside from the question raised about somebody sleeping in a house that abuts it, uh, it looked as though the fenced-in area would be adequate for the size facility she's talking about. But uh, uh, and the fence is a typical picket fence. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to block any sound or sound uh, or visibility. So. Uh, and out behind that, as several people have said, is a conservation area, so-called wetland area that's not built on woods and uh, wetland grass and so on. So, uh, anybody else want to discuss? What I'm uh, going back to your comment, Jack, uh, in referring to the uh, letter from Ivan and Susan Most. Uh, You're referring to the last paragraph where they say they would not object right. to the daycare yes. application with six children or under. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I would personally react to that. Does anybody else have any reaction? I mean, that's not what's been asked for and may not work for the applicant, so it, it may be mm -hmm. not relevant in the this, in this strict sense of the world word, but then. Uh, well, that's why I put it out as a comment yeah. rather than a motion. Yeah. Well, I, I think that um, that's a creative suggestion for addressing the traffic concerns. Um, but I, I also have a problem with uh, the effect this proposed use will have on 
the value of the adjacent properties. Um, it, the only evidence we really have either way is, is some uh, secondhand statements in, in one of the letters that was proposed about potential buyers and mm -hmm. that, as far as value in terms of what the potential selling price of the right. property could be. Um, but I think it's very clear that uh, the residents of the neighborhood place a very high personal value on the residential qualities of the neighborhood. Um, and if that's something that we can consider, <coughs> then, then uh, it seems pretty clear to me that the proposed use uh, would adversely affect that aspect of value that the residents place on the adjacent properties. And, and we have heard from people on the cul-de-sac and, um, and the adjoining property. I think those points are, are well taken. When I looked at this, I, I was also concerned about the balance between the need for good preschool and, and available daycare in, in a community where many families have two working parents. And, um, but I was particularly struck with the fact that there wasn't any testimony coming forward calling for the need um, by any of the neighbors. Um, I, I didn't hear any reference to it from the neighborhood association or or anyone, or even the uh, proponent. Um, my, my only other question would be um, uh, of um, Mr. Smith about the precedents in, in other similar re uh, densely residential uh, neighborhoods. Are there other existing um, home daycare or preschools that have been um, permitted this conditional use without uh, objections? And how many would that be? My history here is is only a year and a half, <clears throat> and um, there I have been several home daycares that have been approved through my office uh, in residential districts. But to my recollection, this is the first one that I've dealt with as far as a home daycare a daycare facility. Uh, so I don't have any history um, to answer your question. We, we did have the one uh, down not far from where I live on. Uh, on Route 77, uh, just three months ago or so, there was oh Lacey. Yeah, yeah. That that was an existing home daycare that that that, that asked for a daycare facility. That's correct. And uh, that that didn't right. That didn't have any. Uh, that didn't have any problem with the board. I, I, and that was approved. Yeah, well, it's hard to complain about traffic on, on uh, Ocean House Road. <laughs> it's going to be generated by, yeah. and uh, and that was I, I forgot now, but that was up to twelve or fourteen students. It's that's the one that somebody I think referred to was fenced in uh, substantially. But, uh, I don't know if that answers your question as best we can from our limited database here, but uh, none of us have been around more than a couple of years uh, in terms of, you know, being involved with the board. But. I, I, can, I can add that, that, that generally speaking, um, it's a situation that, that can be quite controversial um, in all neighborhoods uh, based on conversations I've had with the town planner. But that um, it is a situation that evidently the audience was formed on uh, due to input from the general general consensus of the population and, and i'm not and i'm not saying that because of this application what i'm trying to get at is that that that's a situation that that the townspeople seem to want when they wrote the ordinance as of late which was 1997 to allow such situations as home businesses and home daycares and daycare facilities that's not that's not anything to do with this application. It's just a general overview. Uh, because I, I've heard several times that people are appalled or shocked that this, this is a resident, that the residential neighborhood and how can this happen? But the audience, in, in a general overview, was based on what the townspeople wanted at the time the audience was put into place. And if that's a problem, we probably ought to take it back <clears throat> before the town fathers. But it was done with a requirement for review by two yes. town boards in some detail, so it's clearly meant to uh, be a case-by-case -case evaluation of what 
the situation is rather than a generic uh, blessing for all such home businesses of any kind. Thank you. Um, well, if there's no further discussion, then we need a motion uh, to try to set forth some sort of a solution that we can vote on one way or the other. Um, your, your earlier suggestion, Jack, uh, I have no objection to your making that motion at all. It's just, uh, as I said a minute ago, I don't know if that's helpful to the applicant or if it solves all the problems. Uh, but if you want to frame it, we'll find out uh, how the board feels about it. Well, I, I mean, I have, have some mixed feelings myself about it. Okay, but. then frame something else. <laughs> um, I, I did drive down there, as I said myself, and it clearly is a, it's a tight area. And it was clear to me, as it was to you, that the street was a play area. There were children and parents in the street. Um, so I, like I said, I have very divided feelings about this because of that. Uh, Ann or Tom, do you want to make a motion that we can work with and uh, see where it leads? I guess I would add one comment, if I may. Sure. One of the, one of, I'm sorry. Uh, one of the later speakers made a comment which struck home with me, and that is that if there are backyards there that really are wetlands, and that does sort of force children into the street as a play area, I think that's a significant factor. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would move um, my role as the heavy tonight that uh, the application for a conditional use permit before us right now be denied because the proposed use would create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Um, I don't, I would add that uh, proposed use, there's no evidence that the proposed use would create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions, uh, or other aspects. Um, there is evidence that the proposed use would adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. The proposed site plan and layout, however, are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. And the design and external appearance of any proposed building um, will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to the neighborhood. Uh, but because of the problems with the uh, traffic condition and the adverse effect on uh, the value of adjacent properties, I would move that the application be denied. Second. Well, let me just note for clarification, because I had asked Mr. LaProd to read all of the uh, conclusions, so they're all covered, and that is the proper thing to do. But the last one is really irrelevant because there were no physical changes proposed. So, uh, there's a motion and a second. There's a discussion of the motion. There being none, all those in favor of the motion, which is to deny the application for the two reasons stated. All those in favor? Opposed? Seeing none. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Gibbons, but that's the will of the board here. And uh, thank you all for coming out and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. We appreciate it. Uh, is there uh, any, uh, are there any communications other than the ones related to the actions? Not, for us. not for mine. No. I'll declare the meeting adjourned then, and uh, let it be noted for the record that I'll be out of state next month, and uh, Mr. LaProd will be chairing the meeting. I can't remember night when we had 100% negatives. Yeah, we all played this.